In the previous session, uh, you may remember a graph of, we were mapping uh, big Ka uh, versus the total uh, cross-section, little, sig little sigma, and uh, we, got, we got some very sharp peaks occurring at uh, odd integer multiples of 2 pi, no, sorry, pi over 2. Uh, the, the big Ka, the, the values of big Ka, right? Uh, and these big Ka are in units of pi over k squared. And the uh, peak value, you know, the maximum value of uh, this um, total cross-section sigma uh, turned out to, to be 4 pi over k squared. Now uh, we can uh, mathematically uh, deduce why that's the case. Well, um, I've written, now I've written down two, two of the formulas from the previous session because uh, useful, useful to have. Firstly, uh, remember the relationship between the total cross section and uh, the delta zero, you know, the phase change uh, for, for when you little l, your angular momentum quantum number little l is zero. So you, you're talking about S, S wave, you know, spherical wave. Okay, so it, it was uh, sigma is 4 pi over little k squared sine squared of delta naught. Right, so we'll, we'll use that. Now, uh, these very sharp and uh, peak values, every odd multiple, integer multiple of pi over 2, uh, along the Ka values, uh, why, you, from, from the, here's, here's the formula for the delta zero, so it's r tan of little k over big k, tan big ka minus little ka. Now remember, uh, it's assumed this is very small, that was that was one of the assumptions. And I think in the graph, uh, see, I, I can see it, you can't, I haven't rubbed it off yet because it's still useful. Uh, I think we chose a, the graph had a value, I think uh, little ka was uh, 0.05, let me just check. Yeah, yeah. 0.05. So you know, this, this is a small value. All right. Uh, so, well, Jim, and just look at this. Just uh, almost common sense math. When when is sigma going to be maximum? Well, the k's are constant. Four pi's are constant. So it's going to depend on your delta, right? So when the sines, when, when is sine squared maximum? Maximum value of sine is just one. Okay. So if uh, sine is 1, uh, your delta noughts here have to be, uh, let's see, pi over 2. So you have multi multi multiples of pi over 2. And it's squared, so you know, if it's minus 1, it doesn't matter because you'll square go to plus 1. All right, so you want your delta naught to be multiples of pi over 2. Now here's, here's another formula relating delta to your big K. Uh, so this this big Ka, well the tangent of big Ka uh, can go to infinity. Uh, when, when, does, when does the tangent, the tangent of what angle gives you infinity? Well, uh, pi over 2, right? 90 degrees. Tangent 90 degrees. Uh, gives you uh, <coughs> infinity. So if, if, if big Ka here is, uh, uh, let's see, sine and cos. So when big Ka here is odd multiples of pi over 2, you get infinity here. Now, uh, the R tangent of infinity is pi over 2. Right. Odd multiples pi over two. So your delta here. Now this is you, know, um, you can forget about this in comparison to say pi over two. Uh, pi over two is you know, three point one four something or other divided by two. So you know, this is much smaller. So effectively, delta naught's roughly just you know, odd multiples of pi over two. Okay. So uh, this this is pi over two if you work it out. And this is uh, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, 7 pi over 2, and so on. So uh, it's, it's these values where you get these huge peaks 
uh, and uh, in other words, the, the scattering, you know, because that's what this is all about, is the cross section, right? So the cross section peaks up, you know, shoots right up at, uh, at, at these various values of, of Ka, so it's you know, big Ka, so at certain energies, uh, very sharply defined energies. You get you get this huge uh, uh, peaking increase um, in uh, in the cross section, you know, in the in the scattering, the, the, the amount of scattering that's going on. Okay, uh, and and they are very sharp. I mean, uh, you can uh, you know you can you can calculate. You can calculate the delta naught you know, from this formula uh, for, diff for varying values of Ka. So, um, like if you, his, 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 you know, there are two numbers here, two values for big Ka here uh, that show you how sharp this, uh, this peaking effect is. Like uh, if big Ka is 17.221, uh, you have a zero. You know, this, this is actually zero. There's just no scattering at all, right? But just, you know, a very small amount change in the value of k, so from 17.221 to 17.279, so it's, it's 0.05, right, roughly, 0.05 difference, and you go from zero to a peak, so it's a, it's a very sharply uh, defined um, increase in, uh, in the scattering, in your, in your cross-section, okay? Now, this, this kind of scattering that, that occurs, you know, Near, near a peak value, uh, it's called resonant scattering. Now, um, it's not really ex well, except for the math. It's uh, you know, what's what's going on physically. Uh, it's not truly explained in the text, but um, it, ha it you know, it's just giving for information if you're interested. Uh, it, it occurs when there's a kind of a, a, the particle has a kind of bound state in the well. And, and the energy of that particle, E, is just below the value, uh, the top value of the well, like if, um, uh, what would that mean in terms of E and V naught? Now we're talking attractive, right? So minus V naught. So when E, when E is close to that value, I guess is what, what's being said here, right? Um, now, uh, as an example of this kind of uh, resonance scattering, um, now it's always, it's always nice to bring in the, the real world, right? Uh, experimental results, uh, yeah, because this, this is a pretty, sh uh, literally sharp uh, prediction, and uh, you know, this, this theory is truly sticking its neck out, right? It's saying, uh, you know, this, uh, Ka, you, you can get uh, sigma uh, zero at, at this this particular value, and a very small change in value of Ka, you get this peak. Yeah, it's 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 truly sticking its neck out uh, as a as a theory. So uh, if the practice, if the experimental results uh, predict this theory, then uh, you you know you're doing something right, correct? Yes, with the theory. So you know that's that's uh, from the theorist's point of view, uh, you know, is, is comforting. And if you're an experimentalist, you're happy because you know you now got a theory that's very accurate that explains the, the real-world phenomenon, the experimental results in the lab. Okay, so so win-win, right? Well, uh, here's, here's a real-world example you know, um, predict, uh, that actually shows this resonance scattering effect. Uh, again, uh, we're using uh, like thermal neutrons, uh, in other words, you know, low energy, they're not going near the speed of light, they're not relativistic, and it's a sort of the speeds you'd expect um, of particles like gas particles in the air, that kind of thing. So, okay, and um, so you're uh, shooting.